earlier the minister, he said, it's a short-term pain and a long-term gain. So it's, uh, there's absolutely no gain, it's only been a pain short-term and long-term. And that is what the RBI has actually proved. Now this confirms every single assertion that we have made on the demonetization when it was announced. The Prime Minister had talked of four objectives to be achieved. One is to flush out black money. Two is to end corruption. Three is to end terrorism or terrorist funding. And four is to end your counterfeit currency. These were the four objectives that he made in that, that address to the nation. And we had said n not one of these four can be achieved through this demonetization. And the objective of this demonetization seems to be at the expense of crippling the livelihood of crores and crores of Indian people only to benefit the profit bonanza for multinational and your domestic big corporates. And that has now come out to be true. We have said that black money cannot be, cannot be recovered through such a move. And that has now been completely confirmed that this has been a money laundering exercise to allow black money to be converted into white. Instead of countering counterfeit currency, what has happened is legitimizing all the counterfeit currency. All the illegal notes have now become legal through this process of demonetization and recovery through the new notes. Number three, the terrorist attacks, the unfortunate death of our armed personnel through terrorist attacks has not reduced but increased after the demonetization. Fourthly, the levels of corruption have gone up because now there is more money available in the economy in, in terms of the 2,000 rupee notes than that was available in the economy pre-demonetization through 1,000 rupee notes. So the quantum of corruption has actually virtually doubled with the same note, with one note being used for this. So therefore, we have listed out, at least I have listed out 14 questions which need to be answered. And normally, we would demand a white paper. But since this is all about the Prime Minister's fight against black money, I think there should be a black paper on uh, demonetization. That should be issued. Where all these 14 questions need to be answered by the Prime Minister. Who was the first one? Is who decided on this demonetization exercise? This has been a bone of contention in the parliament. The minister, during the debate, had said that this was a decision of the RBI. The RBI, when it deposed before the parliamentary committee, said that they were informed that the government is going to take this action. Their opinion was asked. And then they responded, a breach of privilege motion was filed by me against the minister for misleading the house. Now since I am no longer an MP and since the then chairman who admitted the breach of privilege is no longer the chairman, I do not know what will be the fate of that uh, breach of privilege. But that pre breach of privilege is, is there on the records. So we'd like to know, and if that is the reason why Mr. Mr. Raghuram Rajan was eased out as the RBI chairman. Number two, there are more than 100 people. One estimate puts it at 103, one puts it at 120, but more than 100 definitely have died in the queues, in the ATMs, and to withdraw their own money. There's been not a paisa of compensation offered by the government not an FIR file as to who is responsible for these deaths. Third, 
it is now clear that more than 100% of the demonetization demonetized notes will come back this is not accounting for the roughly around 16000 crores that could not come back into the banking system by even legitimate people every one of us knows of the fact that there are nris who leave their cash here they keep coming back regularly but they could not come back in time to to uh, what do you call change the change those notes apart from this through now bhutan nepal cooperative banks the various other areas they still have to come back legally they can it's clear it may be more than 100% in which case what does this mean that this has been a very very successful money laundering scheme and this has been a legitimate manner in which corruption has been taken to much higher levels fourthly in bengal and elsewhere we have had instances cases with proof of how bjp had deposited old currency notes hours before the prime minister announced the demonetization was this a pre decided uh, thing so that the bjp can gain at the advantage of other political parties if this is not corruption what else is it and what is this great talk of uh, the prime minister from the red fort saying that there is a crusade against corruption and he talked about 3 lakh crores of black money coming back or or having unearthed the 3 lakh crores of black money and now we know what it means fifth the entire issue of digital economy of forcing the people to move to digitization which is what the finance minister now is saying it was the main reason for this demonetization that was not one of the reasons said by the prime minister when he announced demonetization but the subsequent change of the goal posts shifting of the goal post has meant to actually provide bonanza for your digital transaction companies both foreign and domestic the prime minister himself was there in a front page ad of the paytm paytm and in fact i remember in the parliament i said instead of jai hind the prime minister is now shouting jio hind he was there in the ads of uh, jio so i mean is this a clear profit to these uh, companies at the expense of the indian people now sixthly was this an exercise we want the answer was this an exercise to cover up the fact that the government is refusing to go after mega corporates who have taken loans from our nationalized banks and are not repaying them the case of vijay, vijay malaya and kingfisher is there for all to see not one paisa has been recovered the estimates are that nearly 11000 11 lakh crores of rupees including interest is the value of the total npas through demonetization was that the effort to try and save our banks from collapsing that instead of giving a bailout package to the banks which is what the government normally does when a national bank is collapsing was demonetization the method of a bail in package where whereby you me people are not allowed to recover their own money that is there in the banks so by not allowing us to take our money out the bank's balance sheet is improved and they stop from collapsing was that the real effort the <clears throat> i have spoken about the counterfeit and the corruption uh, issues the terror i am talking about now the who is responsible for the entire collapse of our informal economy informal economy contributes 40% of our gdp two thirds of our employment opportunities now this has had an effect and the demonetization of this government is squarely responsible for this secondly this demonetization has virtually crippled our agrarian sector deepening agrarian distress the promises made to the farmers of one and a half times the msp from production costs etc none of them have been fulfilled 
and this is resulting in present agitation that are met by police firing. In addition to all this, the cost of printing new notes was about 8,000 crores. The cost of recalibrating your ATMs was about 35,000 crores. Now the cost to the loss to the economy, informal economy, according to the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy, CMI, was about 1,50,000 crores. So nearly 2 lakh crores of additional expenditures that has gone in. Now who is paying for it? The Indian people. And in top of that, to glorify your, uh, the Prime Minister and the demonetization and the great crusade against corruption, you had reams and reams of multicolored ads, all your newspapers published. How much was spent on that? And if you add all this, this is all this is an extra burden for a completely, not only a useless exercise from the, from the government's point of view, but a very horrifying burden that has been imposed on the whole people. So we therefore want an accountability on this to be fixed. And that the, those who are res responsible for this must be punished. And all the needle of suspicion points to the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister's office for the entire accountability. So issue a black paper to answer all these questions and let the country know why was this exercise undertaken. Other than, our assessment is very clear, other than legitimizing corruption at high levels and taking it to levels which were hitherto unknown in our country. So that is uh, what we want this government and I think it should answer immediately because they owe it to the country and to the people.